Hey everyone, welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. I'd like to do a review of uh, the latest addition to my watch collection. It is one of the three Grand Seiko models here in front of the camera. And before I jump into it and show you which one that I bought, uh, let me talk about something that I think a lot of you will be able to relate to. And it's something that I call the perfection principle of Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko makes such an exquisitely finished watch with very nice dial details and details when it comes to a macro level. The prowess of their capability of, of craftsmanship on an art level is clearly evident. So <laughs> I think Grand Seiko, they make as close to a perfect watch as possible, but because they get so dang close to perfection, any small subjective perceived negative element becomes more glaring. Whereas on a different brand, say from Switzerland or from Germany, those, those small imperfections that are mostly subjective are not deal breakers. But for whatever reason, with, with uh, watch collectors, Grand Seiko seems to you know get so close to perfect that these small little things become deal breakers to some of us, as silly as that may sound, and I think I've been guilty of that in the past, and I'm glad that I've finally gotten over that, and I can enjoy these nearly perfect watches that are so satisfying to use and to wear. They really are impressive. So we have a few different models here, all in the 44 GS case, and I might note that uh, Grand Seiko is, is celebrating their 55th anniversary for this specific angular case design that debuted back in 1967. And I prefer the thinner execution of the 44 GS. I just think it looks a little bit more sharp. Uh, and you can notice the difference in height here from a high accuracy quartz, that's the thinnest. And then we have the new high beat mechanical, that's still pretty thin. And then the tallest here is the older high beat true GMT. But that being said, let me show you the one that I bought. And I am seriously on the fence of adding another one. Uh, but he here it goes, guys. I bought the Grand Seiko Sea of Clouds Limited Edition. The reference is the SBGP017. This one will retail at $3,800. And the nickname comes down to the dial, the Sea of Clouds. If you look at this dial, you'll notice a very soft, irregular, almost wispy dial texture done in a light baby blue color. And that color is complemented by the use of blued elements for your seconds hand and your GS applied badge. Now those elements are a lot darker. In some lights, they almost border on black. They're very navy with the hint of purple. In other lighting scenarios, they are more blue. And then in certain angles, you really pick up on that electric blue or that cobalt blue. And that is so dynamic, so beautiful. The subtle use of blue, I don't know, there's something about this that really just grabs my attention. I love the simplicity. I love the layout. This, when it comes to the dial texture, when it comes to the color play, when it comes to these polished, faceted, applied markers and sharp Dauphine style hands, uh, in this 44 GS case, it just screams Grand Seiko, and that is a very good thing in my eyes. Now, from across the room, it just kind of looks like a baby blue dial, and then you get up close, and especially under the macro lens, you notice the crispness of the detail work and the brilliance of the polishing. Again, there is a lot of talent on display here when it comes to production on a very minute level. This is a level of art. Now, you'll notice a small five-pointed gold star, a little badge, a little applique above the six o'clock marker, and this signifies the high precision caliber within and let's talk about that movement. This is the 9F85A caliber. It is a high accuracy quartz with a twin pulse step motor. There will be nine joules within this movement. And there is also something called a backlash auto adjustment mechanism. 
So when that seconds hand goes to the next position on the dial, it does so very quickly with two pulses from the, you know, from the motor. And because of this uh, mechanism, there is no wobble, there is no sudden stop. And then you see some backlash that is eliminated. And that's so dang cool to me. Now this, uh, this is super accurate. This will be accurate to a window of minus five to plus five seconds per year every 12 months. So I love that. The thing I love the most is the combination of a time zone hour hand, which I find very practical, especially if you travel, you don't need to hack the movement. You can adjust, adjust the time zone and it takes maybe three or four seconds. And then I love this feature for the end of an irregular month or daylight savings time. Again, it takes just a few seconds to make the adjustments and you haven't hacked the haven't hacked the movement. So that incredible accuracy is still at play. Now that paired with the fact that I can see the movement. This is very unusual to take a look at a quartz movement, which generally is looked down upon in the eyes of watch collectors. But take a look at how beautiful this is. And bear in mind the tech specs paired with this very sharp striping and the gorgeous blued screws, the unglage work, it really is, oh, it's very exciting in my eyes. Again, I love how unusual it is. I love the tech at play here. And then I love uh, this just under the macro lens. It's a very fun watch to wear that's comfortable and carries 100 meters of water resistance. Now, again, I mentioned this 44 GS case. It is done on the 55th anniversary of this design, and it's my favorite Grand Seiko case design. And I think it, again, I mentioned this, but I think it just looks a little bit better than these other two Grand Seikos because of how thin it is and how trim it is on wrist. And for reference, my wrists are 7.25 inches in circumference. Now, let me end with a couple negative elements here. We have a push-pull sign crown. It would be nice if this was a thread down crown just for peace of mind. Uh, the other thing, the bracelet is a touch loose when it comes to the lateral play. Yes, this does have nice finishing. We have a five link bracelet design. There are screw pin connectors connecting the links together, but it has more flex than you would expect. Uh, say if you're coming from a luxury watch background from brands uh, you know, from Switzerland and Germany. So just bear that in mind. The last thing that I've noticed over time is the hairline, uh, you know, wear marks that come with using your watches are more visible on this 44 GS case with the gorgeous Suratsu polishing on these angular lugs. So it goes back to the perfection principle. Any one of those elements, in fact, you combine those negative elements they are not a deal breaker on almost any other brand, but it keeps some collectors away on Grand Seiko, as silly as that may sound. Uh, but you take the whole of the watch into consideration, and this is absolutely near perfection. And I'm so glad to have added it to the rotation. It's nice to get back into Grand Seiko, and I don't want to be Grand Seiko less again in the future. It's a very enjoyable brand for me. I would say right up there with my favorite, which at the moment, it hovers between Breitling and Cartier. So let's uh, just end with one thing here. I mentioned I bought this one, but I'd love to buy another one. And I am mesmerized by this Peacock Limited Edition. In fact, I have these two on loan from Exquisite Timepieces, my recommended Grand Seiko authorized dealer, a family-owned brick-and-mortar AD in Naples, Florida, and I really want to buy this, but I just bought this dang uh, Sea of Clouds Limited Edition, and so I would need to sell something else for my collection to make, uh, just make room in the collection. I, I can't continue to add I'm not that type of collector. I have to replace. I have to flip. So I don't know. I'm kind of struggling with that right now because there's not really a watch that I want to flip, but I really want this limited edition and I kind of have that fear of missing out. So let's see what happens. Maybe in the next couple of weeks, I buy this one. Maybe it takes a month or maybe I miss out and then I regret that and then I have to buy it on the secondary market. We'll see what happens. I appreciate you taking the time to watch today. Please reach out with any questions you may have. Relevant links will be in the description of the video. 
Have a great day. And I'll see you next time.